Good afternoon. I'm Aliki Pappas Weekland, and I'm here today on the first day of the meetings of the technical consultation folate status in women and neural tube defect risk reduction. I have with me today Dr. Bob Black from Johns Hopkins University, Bloomberg School of Public Health, and Dr. Lorenzo Bato from the University of Utah and the International Clearinghouse for Birth Defect Surveillance and Research. We're here today to speak with these gentlemen um, to ask them some questions that we've received from stakeholders about the work that's going on with the consultation specifically related to neural tube defect burden and surveillance. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. The first question I have for you is, we know that getting a handle on the burden of neural tube defects globally has been a challenge. And I wondered if you could highlight some of the main challenges and speak about the work that's coming from this consultation and how that's contributing to the field to help fill this knowledge gap. Sure, I can start. There have been uh, previous estimates of the burden of disease related to neural tube defects. They've been uh, done uh, with the data that existed and, and not updated for about 10 years, so it seems appropriate now that we try to update with the most current data and perhaps uh, improved methods. There are challenges in regard to the data that are available. Uh, for high-income countries, there, um, there is better information from surveillance and from uh, cause of death statistics, but for low-income and, and some of the middle-income countries, the, the data are much more sparse. We, we have difficulty uh, understanding how much uh, of the burden is related to stillbirths because they're not counted very well in, in many of these countries, but even uh, deaths that occur in live births, uh, the uh, classification of the congenital anomalies and neural tube defects are not, uh, not identified reliably and reported very well. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, review the, uh, the new papers that have come out in the last 10 years uh, also to uh, look at surveillance systems that, uh, that have been put in place in some countries, uh, birth registries and surveillance, hoping to, uh, to improve the statistics. There, there will still be challenges uh, for, for many of the areas in Africa and, and Asia where the, the prevalence might be higher. Uh, we'll try to get a better estimate, but I think they, they still will not be perfect. Uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, trying to improve them. And uh, um, I think it's important to understand how important this, uh, um, this uh, information is and why we have to try our best to fill these uh, information gaps. I mean, this information is crucial uh, for clinical care. We have to know how many kids we need to, to take care of. It's crucial to understand the true burden um, uh, uh, of this condition. So for general health care planning, and it's crucial also for, for those of us who try and prevent uh, these um, conditions because uh, only by having accurate and uh, reliable information we can move forward in an um, evidence-based uh, fashion. So um, as was pointed out, the main problem with data is that we don't have uh, all of the data we need or we want, and especially from the countries where most uh, neurotube defects actually happen, which is in low and middle um, income countries. So the way, one of the ways that we're trying to help move the field forward is through uh, capacity um, improvement and mainly working with other organizations to train people um, on the ground to set up surveillance programs that tend to be um, accurate uh, and complete. Uh, it's a work in progress, but um, it's work that uh, has to be done. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I think it's incredibly important that this is filling a, a, a much needed knowledge gap. I have two other questions. They both come from the International Federation for Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus. The first is to you, Lorenzo. Um, where countries have surveillance systems, their data collection may vary. How can we create greater consistency in surveillance globally? Well, that's a very um, important point. It speaks to the fact that we not only want data, we want um, accurate data and data that can be used for action. The variability between country and uh, also within um, 
a country is a major uh, issues, uh, issue. A uh, way to move forward include uh, training the people, having uh, standards related to uh, uh, to data collection and uh, and also data reporting. Uh, but for example, one of the main sources of uh, variability is the fact that some countries or some areas collect information only on live births, whereas others uh, are able to enhance that system and collect also uh, information about uh, stillbirths and where that's the case also from pregnancy um, determinations. In the case of these conditions, it's very uh, important to have the complete uh, picture. Uh, another piece of information or um, another component is being able to uh, collect data not only at the time of birth but also having a reasonable follow-up at the period because some conditions uh, tend to become uh, to manifest only uh, later uh, in life. Thanks, Lorenzo. The second question is to you, Bob. How can innovative ideas improve moni monitoring and surveillance in countries that do not have birth registration systems? And can you also talk a little bit, to add to this question, about some of the efforts that are underway with birth registries? Sure. Um, for many of the countries that uh, we're interested in having uh, better data for have not had good birth registration. Uh, there, there actually is a new uh, emphasis on birth registration being, being uh, promoted and, and facilitated by a number of agencies, for example, UNICEF. And this is, it has to do with uh, other issues, not necessarily uh, congenital anomalies, but has to do with rights of children, uh, access to services, uh, and, and other, uh, other issues that are uh, leading to the promotion of better birth registration. Uh, even in those settings, the, uh, the registration of deaths and the causes of death is, uh, would still be lagging, and, and that's another aspect that uh, that is increasing, uh, increasingly getting some emphasis, uh, civil registration, vital statistics systems that are trying to register deaths, get information on the causes of death, and perhaps over time that will get, uh, get us better information on uh, congenital anomalies and NTDs in, in uh, specific. Um, I think in, in some countries uh, there is a, an approach to use sample registration systems not to try for universal birth and death registration, but to set up a sampling uh, in the country. This is the system that's used, for example, in India and China to get better statistics on causes of death. And, and I think now there is uh, some effort in other countries, uh, low-income countries such as Mozambique, where we're working to set up a similar kind of sample registration system that will try to get the cause of death information. So that's one aspect that uh, we might be able to get better uh, information from in, in the coming years. Uh, but I think for uh, other settings where we're not talking about uh, registration of all 